don't use this to seal your coax connections. Now if I show you these two tapes, can you tell which one you should be using? This is normal electrical tape, just the everyday run of the brand electrical tape that you can get. I've also got some other, I would call this higher end stuff, Nitto stuff, but it's still electrical tape at the end of the day. The problem with using just normal electrical tape is the fact that it's not really waterproof. One of the most important things to do is to seal your coax connections when you run them to your antenna outside because when it rains or you get ice or snow on those connections, then water can get into your cable and cause all sorts of problems. It can cause corrosion, it can change the characteristics of the cable, it can change the SWR due to those sort of things. So you want to make sure that you seal things right. This is the tape that we're going to be using today and I'm going to show you how to seal your coax connections correctly so that no water will get in and that you'll have a perfect seal until you need to reuse that cable maybe again. You'll be able to undo all of the tape, cut it away and your connectors will be as the day that you put them in. Everything that I use in this video will be linked in the description below. So this is a little bit of Messi and Poloni Hyperflex 10 that I've got here. That's got a N connector male on one side and a N female on the other side. I've got my amalgamating tape. Now this is Nitto uh, self-fusing butyl rubber tape. Uh, that's the stuff that I've got. But anything that is called self-amalgamating, self-fusing, just check it, that's the stuff that you want. And there is a special way that you put this on. Uh, some, of, some of this tape will come with a backing. This tape doesn't, which is really good, which is why I like it. But the stuff that has a, like a, a backing that you need to peel off, that will also work too. So the first thing that you wanna do is now, you wanna, this is, as you can see, this is stretchy and you wanna sort of um, make sure that you elongate this 80% of what its normal length is. So we wanna be able to stretch this. It will break, so you don't wanna to stretch too far. But just start here on the cable, and you wanna start down from the connector because we wanna stop all of the water. We don't wanna sort of start here. We wanna be starting on this um, bit of the cable. And what we do is just, yeah, elongate it, and we go round the cable like this. And what we're doing is, we're doing half laps over the, half overlaps over the top of the uh, other um, lap that we've just done, if that sort of makes sense. So I'll just show that to you here on the connector a little bit, a little bit easier so you could see. So you can see there that I've done one lap. So what I wanna do is I wanna come over here and I wanna sort of line that up so that it's a half lap over where I've just done. So you wanna continue on doing that to you get to the end. So we're gonna do this the whole length of the cable. Now obviously as you do this, the connector's not gonna be perfectly straight. So you're gonna to have to sort of go up and down the ridges. Just make sure that you get that half lap in. That's the most important bit. And you can see here that uh, I'm just stretching it as I go along so that we get a nice good coverage. Because if we do it too loose, then it won't fuse properly. So I've just gone over the connector there too, and you can see, if you have a look around, there's no sort of exposed or bare metal. I always like to maybe just do a, another wrap around there just to make sure. And then we go all the way to the end. Now, we've done one coverage or one lap here of the entire cable, one length. Now, that's not enough because if we get any breaks in any of this, what's gonna happen is the water's just gonna run in. So what we'll do is I always go back and I do a second lap all the way back to where we started. And again, doing the half laps, overlaps, I keep saying laps. How many, how many times have I said laps in this video? Overlaps, we wanna do a half overlap every single time. Okay, now we've done that, we can basically break that off and make sure that it's all sealed and we've got a nice seal. Now that's two for just normal, that's what I do for most of my coax connections. If I am putting a connector on say a mountaintop or a place where I know that I'm gonna get ice or I'm gonna get snow, just to be for peace of mind, I usually put a third. I'll, put, I'll run up, back, and then a third amount of tape over the top of the connector just to make sure. Now this is very important and this is a step that doesn't wanna be skipped. We wanna get our good old electrical tape out and we wanna put that 
over the top of this because this uh, amalgamating tape is not UV stable. So what will happen over time is this will become brittle and it will break apart. So what we do is we put a coverage or a layer of electrical tape over the top. We do that in a similar way. Electrical tape is not as stretchy, but you can sort of work it and just stretch it over the top. If it's not perfect, that's fine because we're not sort of keeping the water out or anything like that. All this is doing is keeping the sun off of the top of that amalgamating tape so that that connection stays nice underneath. Sometimes it's a good idea too, uh, where I've just stopped with the electrical tape here on the end of the connector to just put a, a cable tie or a small cable tie there because electrical tape does unravel itself eventually and it'll be flapping around in the wind and it'll cause all sorts of OCD issues because you could see that moving up the top of the tower. So just put a cable tie around that, tighten it up and uh, that is a nice looking connection which should not get any water in it for hopefully ever. So now that you know how to seal your coax connections properly, the next question is, what's the best coax to buy? Well, for me, I like the stuff from Messi and Poloni. This is their Hyperflex 13. This is low loss stuff for those kind of VHF, UHF applications. And then there's also this white Sahara cable for high power and heat applications like FT8. 